Thank you so much for joining us here in the KEXP studios. I'm Cheryl Waters, and I'm so excited to be down here featuring live music. And if you love KEXP, I invite you to check out our website at kexp.org. We stream live at kexp.org. And also we're at 90.3 FM in Seattle. We've got free mobile apps and we love to find our favorite bands all over the world and bring them here into the studios. And that is exactly what we've done today. Tennis is here with me. Welcome. Thank you. So fabulous to have you here. Absolutely adore the new album, Pollen. I think you're going to start us off with a song from that one. It's Tennis, live on KEXP.
You're listening to Tennis Live on KEXP. I love it. Tennis is live here in the KEXP studios. That sounded phenomenal. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're so happy to be here. Uh, we're so happy to have you. It's been way too long. Since I know. I think it hasn't been since our second record that yeah. we've been here. Well, and I think we also had to cancel one from uh, something. I don't know. Something like a pandemic or something. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's <laughs> right. You're sort of on a tour for two records right now, and I love that you threw in something from Swimmer there. Yeah, we felt like uh, we have that song hasn't been given justice because that album cycle was cut so short. Well, it'll be exciting for fans to see you performing right now. In between your last tour, which was a long time ago, you did something you do quite often, and you went on a month-long sailing trip. And as has often been the case before, you worked on pollen. What is it about being out on the water and on the boat that is so 
helpful to helping you create and want, make you want to start new records? I think it honestly could have been anything. It's kind of just, you know, an accident that sailing is how we found it. I mean, I feel like what we really need is just... Um, quiet and isolation from things. I am a person that's very easily distracted and also really insecure about my ideas and something about being in the middle of nowhere um, really helps me to like trust my instincts and I know Patrick feels the same. So, you know, a boat just presented itself as like a really intriguing way of achieving that, but it could have been anything. It could have been like a cabin in the woods or cutting the line to our internet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What does that actually look like for you? Are you able to take instruments on the boat with you? We have like a really small setup that's just like bare essentials. We'll have like a drum programming type of situation and then a small keyboard, acoustic guitar, and then like a little Pro Tools setup where we can mock up all our songs. But yeah, nothing's like final there. It's all just... Uh, yeah, the salt the water ideas. is extremely damaging to all things, especially instruments. So we only bring things that we're okay with being destroyed. I didn't <laughs> think about boat. that. Um, but it's a really nice way of just like getting rough sketches, um, demos of things. Um, and we've learned to demo really badly because in the past we would demo too well and get overattached. Like our first album, Cape Dory, is basically all demos we were too attached to. Um, so we, so working on the boat with really bad instruments has helped resolve the demoing issue. Well, you've been, a couple have been writing and performing for like 14, 15 years now. And this record is a very collaborative effort, which I know from reading interviews with you in the past has not been how you've worked in the past. You've gone off and written independently and then come together towards the end. What what made this be the time for that to happen where I heard that you pretty much wrote everything together? Yeah, we did on this one. I think in the past, because Patrick and I were both new to writing, um, and also, you know, being married, um, we both had a concern of our, like, identities collapsing into each other as a couple and in our work. So it was really important for us in those early records to be able to point to that is Elena's song, that is Pat's song, and see who our individual identities were. And then over time, once we gained a lot of confidence in our individual voices and really respected and understood what each of us was trying to achieve individually, we felt comfortable kind of closing that gap and just working in the same room together throughout the entire process. And now it's been a really cool, like, almost more egoless experience when we would listen back to Pollen, we'd be like, sick baseline. I have no idea who wrote that. <laughs> we don't know who gets totally. to take credit yet. I love that. Well, each of your albums is essentially a concept album, and Pollen is no exception. And Elena, I know very literally you are an allergy sufferer, uh -huh. and I am right there in that camp. I just read the title of the record, and my eyes and my throat start itching. But You are so brave to be in radio <laughs> and have allergies. I applaud you. Well, it's definitely that time of year right mm -hmm. now, so it must be hard for you on tour. Everything in Seattle is blooming right it's now. It's so hard for me right now, but also it's very on brand to be dropping pollen during pollen season and just be having an allergy attack the entire tour. There you go. I'm sure you planned your tour around that. Well, there's also a metaphorical theme to pollen as well, and can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, Pat and I discussed a lot about like how could like a microscopic granule spin my life out so completely. Um, so we spent a lot of time thinking about, you know, kind of reflecting, you know, this is quite a ways into our career as a record. Um, and we were just noticing how it's those like really small, almost accidental chance moments of your life that end up shaping you immensely. Um, like this, one of the songs we played earlier, Hotel Valet, is about when Patrick worked the graveyards as a valet at night and I worked the opening shift at a restaurant nearby and as he got off his shift, he came and got breakfast from me opening the restaurant and all I did was bring him his plate. We didn't even meet, but yeah, he she, remembered me. She didn't me. remember me, but I remembered her. <laughs> yes, he remembered my hair, which is hard to forget. Um, and, you know, that allowed us to meet again a few months later. He remembered me and then this like profound bond occurred um, instantaneously. But just those like tiny accidental chance moments of life where there's kind of just like a fork in the road and you just get spun in this new um, like amazing direction that you couldn't have anticipated. And so I spent a lot of time with Pat thinking about those things on pollen, just those like little moments that you would maybe miss, but actually were hugely consequential to shaping you. 
Well, Hotel Valet is not the only song on the record about your valet, Pat. You had one with the valet, which has this three piano or three keyboard assault on it, which I love. <laughs> and it's so great to see someone in here playing our beautiful baby grand. But I heard that you got some new instruments for this, a bunch of keyboards. And a bunch of keyboards. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Kind yeah, of we a grand like to statement. Uh, change things up um, because we get very, like, locked into certain sounds from the previous record. So we just made a decision to not use any of the same types of instruments on pollen. So we got all new keyboards, all new synths. And for the first like month of writing, it was really just exploring all the possible sounds that could be created. And as we would find new things, it would motivate a new part, like a hook or like a lead line. Um, and that's a lot of the album came from that just like totally new exploration. And I felt like that was really helpful. You know, you get kind of entrenched in your ways at our very old age at totally. this point in, in life. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the new, I feel like all the new equipment is also a way to like hear music like for the first time again, which is something we're always struggling with. Mm -hmm. And you have your own studio at home, so you have the time and the space to play around with all of that, which must be great. To either uh, positive or negative <laughs> means. <laughs> yeah, so. sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not so great. <laughs> Well, I uh, had a fun time stumbling across this video recently where you were um, recommending and buying music that you loved, some vinyl records, and some of my favorite bands, Spiritualized, Built to Spill, mm -hmm. and Bjork, and Minnie Ripperton. I also discovered a couple of great things on there, The Millennium and Jim Sullivan, so thank yes. you so much for that. I actually played The Electric Prunes today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone told me that they bought that on a 45, a listener in Dallas. Oh my God, yeah, we're trying to get all electric prunes records on vinyl it's just so good and so weird in fact um there's a song on pollen never been wrong about anything where there's like a latin section in the middle and that was a hundred percent motivated by the electric prunes record where it's just randomly this like broke latin <laughs> mass i don't even know psychedelic mass <laughs> it's so cool <laughs> well i also learned a lot about the band in that one i thought it was super fun i know um for a long time i've known that you love 60s girl groups but i didn't know the shrells were sort of responsible for you starting as a band yeah very monumental and um and I learned that you loved, you learned about tempo from Laura Nero. <laughs> yes, I did. I really did. <laughs> and you talked about something I had never heard about, how she sings in her head voice mm -hmm. and that you had experimented around how she did that with your singing. But I don't even know what that means. I mean, does it, like I hear a voice in my head when I talk. Is that what you're talking about? Like what no, you hear head in your voice head? voice is like for like, um, why does come down? That's my head voice. Um, as opposed to, that's kind of in the same range where I could have belted it. Adele would belt it. I shouldn't belt it because it will sound terrible. I'm not good at belting and I'm really out of practice. But I learned like there's something so like vulnerable and emotional about that, the fragility of your head voice, especially the way Laura Nero does it. And so I have just kind of shifted as a practice once I get up in the range of my voice to where I would be belting, I just go to my head voice instead and have learned to really like live in there. And it, it feels extremely um, emotional. I can't explain it any other way. I love it. Well, it's so wonderful to hear you performing these new songs. I also learned from that video that Patrick has been recording live shows since you were a te young teenager, like 13 years old, and I absolutely have to have that bootleg of that built to Yeah, show. you're not the only one who's asked for it. So I actually have like a whole like series of bootlegged recordings that I need to dig up from my uh, middle school recording days. <laughs> well, I love how Elena says that's for your retirement fund there. It so. is. <laughs> that's great. Well, thank you so much for bringing these beautiful songs from Pollen to KEXP today. And it is so fabulous always to see you live. Oh, Thank thanks you. for having us. It's such an honor. The studio is amazing. Agreed. And you sound amazing in it. And we want to thank all of our wonderful listeners for supporting sessions like this one with Tennis. You can find out more about us at kexp.org. And you can make a contribution anytime to just support discovery of great artists and see these wonderful live videos. And subscribe to our YouTube channel and see so many more. Thank you once again. It's Tennis Live on KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.